Ah, it's the excitement of discovery. The thrill of the unknown. Living life on the wild side. Kind of like running with scissors, only we're using a paintbrush and not really running, we're painting. Hello, Minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. What do you think of that name, Minders? Term for all my viewers, my loyal fans, anybody who watches, I don't know. Just sort of playing around with that name. I kind of like it. Minders. Short, quick, easy to say. What do you mean, what's a minder? I just was explaining it. Yeah, of course you're a minder. If you want to be. No, I know you don't have a mind. Just making sure. Well, anyways, I thought I would do another spontaneous video today. Uh, it seems to be one of the most requested type of episodes. Let's do another one, and I'm going to focus a little bit on what rock formations today. I, I wanted to get the effect of kind of a cascading set of rocks going down a hill. So in some respects, this is a planned composition, but it's spontaneous in that I'm not drawing out the trees or the rocks ahead of time. I'm going to put down a little bit of masking fluid uh, just to kind of give myself some highlights to play with. But I'm going to put down washes, see what the washes give me, and as usual, per a spontaneous painting, I'm going to try to turn those washes into something. So it's, it's an evolving thing. So without any other ado, let's get to it. All right, so we're going to start out with some masking fluid. These are going to be the tops or the lit portion of the rocks that are coming down. And this part is sort of a planned part, although I'm not drawing out the rocks in advance. But I know I'm going to need some highlights, and I know I want to paint some dark washes all around them. So I'm giving myself some highlights to play with, and a little kind of a brushy, grassy area at the top. It's not evident in this video, but I did allow the masking fluid to dry, so... And now we get into the spontaneous part, or the most spontaneous part, and that's applying the washes. I did have in mind that I wanted a tree line at the top, and this sort of wash or down cascading rocky slope. So that's what I'm doing here. Mostly wet and wet washes. I'm using ultramarine violet, uh, using some mixed with Payne's gray so it gives me this sort of uh, gray violet color in the shadows in the greens I'm using azo green uh, with touches of Prussian blue and then the warm parts are mainly red iron oxide possibly a little sepia so only about six colors all total and that's what I love the most, I think, is, is limited palette painting. I think they're the most harmonious. All I'm doing here is just lifting while it's still wet, going in and lifting where some of the, the trees and the tree thicket is going to be. Um, I didn't mention it while it was happening, but you saw over to the left I added water and then even sprayed in some water spots and those gave me little intentional backgrounds. Another mind of watercolor element. You just throw in some conditions and see what the mind of watercolor gives you. Now here I'm lifting in places where I know I'm not going to want it as dark. I'm starting to visualize the rocks a little. Based on the washes that I have. And lifting in the foliage. This is all still fairly damp. And I spritz in some, some water droplets around the foliage because that just helps me paint the foliage. I think I've showed that to you in other videos, how I do that. Slow this down for you a little bit here, just painting uh, distant 
tree line to give me one more level further back and a little more distant dimension. Just a faint wash of iron oxide. And again with the droplets to help let watercolor help me paint the foliage. I'm already at this point getting excited about water, what the watercolor washes have given me. The nice little splashy expressive areas. This is the, the really big huge fun part of spontaneous painting. You just don't know what you're going to get. What it's going to give you. It's, it's kind of like singing a duet for you musicians out there or, or jamming you know if you're a guitar player jamming with another good musician you know something just starts happening And obviously here I'm just lifting the masking fluid now. That's the little grassy area. I'm just using a rubber cement pickup. You can remove masking fluid with your finger by rolling it off. I don't like to do that. Sometimes it, it will smudge the paper. But it's perfectly fine. A lot of artists do it. I just use this. Rubber cement pickup really grabs the masking fluid and pulls it off. Now this is a Arches 300 pound cold press watercolor block. They do make watercolor blocks with 300 pound paper, which is kind of cool. I mean, you don't get the slightest bit of buckling. Now there's only 10 sheets in a block, but um, still it's a nice way to paint on 300 pound paper. I'll put a link down in the description if you're interested in getting some. Most blocks that you buy are 140 pounds. And that's typically what you, you see and find. These are not as common, but it's, it's awesome. I love it. Just gives you a dead flat surface to paint on. Very resilient to working, scrubbing, things like uh, masking or whatever. Now we're coming to the stage where I'm going to really start turning these little masked highlights into rocks. The first stage is uh, blending on the shadow side. I've got light coming in from the right. So I'm going to leave the edges of the rocks on the right. I'm going to leave fairly hard edge. But on the left side, where they're coming towards the viewer, I'm going to blend those in with the background. And what I'm using is a scrubber. Don't let the name fool you. Scrubbers are not something you bear down and start Hard, you know heavily scrubbing the paper with uh, it's still it pays to use a very very light touch and, and I was here I was just barely rubbing those the brush over that paint with a, with a wet scrubber but because that brush is so stiff and it really flicks that paint off of the surface it really pulls that paint up off the surface now I've got some nice rounded, more easy to model shapes. It's starting to look like rocks now. And now it's just a matter of taking it to completion. And this, it just gets really exciting when you get to this point. The 
pulling out my silver black velvet uh, brush, silver brush, black velvet, detail brush, and I want to start modeling these rocks. Start separating them, adding little rocky kind of facets and whatnot. And it really didn't take much from this point, just a few little shaded facets here and there. While this is the most fun part, it's also the most dangerous part in terms of overworking. You can just literally get what I call detail drunk. You know, an artist that gets detail drunk just thinks that they have to outline and define every stinking detail. It, it's just really fun. But when you get carried away with it, everything looks over rendered. And so I wanted some lost and found edges. And here I'm detailing branches. Uh, I'm trying to pull in more tree trunks and uh, just make it look like a real tree thicket back there of pine trees. Most of these, these spontaneous paintings I do as, as exercises. Um, it probably would have been better to have drawn out those rocks. By the same token, once in a while you'll get a little bit more organic uh, kind of spontaneity if you don't draw them out too precisely. It just depends. Um, And that's pretty much where I'm going to stop. I'm going to sign it. And hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of this kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button. I surely appreciate it. And we'll see you next time, everyone.